Microphone check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. You guys good on white balance?
Good morning. Thanks for joining. Just a bit of housekeeping for the media joining virtually today. We'll accept questions via the Zoom feed following remarks. You can submit your question at any time by typing it into the Q&A function in Zoom. Now to begin the program, please welcome Visit California President and CEO, Carolyn Batetta. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, another perfect day in California. How could you want to be anywhere else? Uh, I couldn't think of a better backdrop for this momentous occasion than the iconic Moscone Center in San Francisco. And welcome all of you who are here in person as well as the media that is zooming in today for this annual statewide briefing every May to celebrate National Travel and Tourism Week as well as California uh, Tourism Month, Visit California comes together to announce the forecasting for next year and really tries to put a punctuation point on the economic importance of travel and tourism in the state of California. It's taking on particular significance this year coming out of this devastating pandemic that arrests a decade of growth in California. So today we'll discuss the state of California's travel and hospitality industry and how we're tapping into the power of possibility to chart a path forward coming out of the most challenging period in modern history for California and frankly, our friends across the world. So in a moment, you'll hear from uh, my good friend and colleague, Joe D'Alessandro, the president of San Francisco Travel and an executive committee board member on the Visit California Board of Directors, and he'll share his perspectives on one of the most iconic destinations on the planet from both a leisure and business perspective. But first, I'd like to introduce a dear friend of mine and wonderful colleague, Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kunalakis, who will provide a brief overview of the state's reopening plans and the role travel will play in California's economy. Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis sits on the Governor's Task Force on Business and Jobs Recovery and has been instrumental in helping advise the state's approach to reopening, as well as being a true champion of the travel and hospitality industry here in California. So thank you for joining us and welcome Lieutenant Governor. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Carolyn. It is wonderful to be here with you and with so many uh, representatives of California's extraordinary travel and tourism industry to celebrate May, which is Travel and Tourism Month uh, in the state of California. And it is very fitting that we would come together at this moment, at the beginning of May, to talk about travel and tourism in California, how incredibly important this industry is, and how ready we are to get back into travel and tourism mode in our state. Uh, so just a couple couple of things um, to point out. One is that uh, travel and tourism is an extremely important part of the California economy. In 2019, before the shutdown, there were about 1.2 million jobs centered in the travel and tourism industry, about $145 billion throughout the industry itself, from international and domestic visitors, um, from uh, conferences at places like the incredible iconic Moscone Center where we are right now, um, and to the uh, uh, Hollywood and Disneyland and Yosemite and Napa Valley and all of these places where people come from around the state, around the country, and around the world to visit. <clears throat> Our small and medium-sized businesses in the state of California account for about half of our jobs in this state. And as we know, whereas there are some uh, jobs, many jobs, many industries where people were able to work from home, uh, where uh, people were able to work remotely, the travel and tourism industry 
there was no working from home. And so we are starting 2021 uh, at a significant deficit for this industry. The good news is we are opening back up. Already in the state of California, the vast majority of the population is in a county which is in orange tier or better. And we are moving very quickly toward that June 15th date that the governor has set for a full reopening for our state. Now, reopening with precautions, reopening with capacity limits. That is what this is all about. So for those of you watching uh, from home, for those of you who are getting ready to set their travel plans, for those of you companies that are looking to schedule your conferences, get ready. It's time to start planning and you can already begin to assemble with precautions to find out exactly what those are between now and June 15th when the tiers, the color system, all of that goes away. You can go to covid19.ca.gov to get specifics. But here's what we know. Already restaurants in California are open with capacity limits. Uh, movie theaters are open with capacity limits. Hotels are open with capacity limits. A friend of mine just told me this morning, last weekend, he went to Disneyland and was so impressed with the ability to go and enjoy uh, that incredible place for California visitors right now for the moment um, and to do it and know that he was safe. So uh, this is where we are. It is a call to all Californians to not only help support this industry, which supports so many jobs and so many small businesses, but also the fact that it's time. You can safely get out in public again. And I think we all need a little weekend getaway. We all need the opportunity to get together with friends. We all need the opportunity to be with family in a public place. And of course, for those businesses to be able to come back together to uh, work face to face in the same room with our colleagues where we know so much innovation happens when the human experience is part of the story. Uh, so with that, I will hand it back over to Carolyn Batetta. Thank you all and safe travels. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for those strong words of encouragement. Uh, it's very uh, compatible with really why we're here. In person, uh, the first time in over a year, as a matter of fact, because we're here to announce that California tourism is officially on the comeback path and all signs point to a strong recovery. Now it'll require a lot of work and a strong support from all Californians to get us back to where we were during the pre-pandemic. But as Californians know best, anything is possible here. So all Californians have circled June 15th on their calendars as the day we can begin to put the pandemic in the rear view mirror. And as the life affirming freedom of travel is right before us and once again a reality. Visit California is gearing up to celebrate this incredible milestone and the possibilities to come. Our latest forecast, compiled in partnership with Tourism Economics, bears out a pandemic recovery that'll take us about four years, in fact. Uh, but together, we can actually try to shorten that recovery curve, and we'll be talking about that in a little bit. I just want to note that domestic forecasts for visitor spendings in California will reach 76% in t of 2019 levels for this year. And in 2022, domestic visitor spending will hit 94% of 2019 levels. While we won't likely see international travel rebound significantly until 2023 overall, total visitor spending, including international, will hit 87% of 2019 levels. Now, the outlook for 2021 travel in California is very promising as the state is poised to reopen. 
We're thrilled to mark the symbolic opening of Disneyland, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, as well as our other theme parks, as a momentous occasion that gives us permission and hope for the short-term recovery ahead and seeing what life is like on the other side of the pandemic. More than 75% of Californians have taken some action toward planning a trip in just the past week. And the vast majority of California's abundance of tourism assets, such as theme parks, museums, concert halls, restaurants and wineries among them are moving toward normal operations, of course, with COVID precautionary measures in place for the short term and the long term. But California does have work to do to regain its market share, even in the eyes of American travelers. Almost twice as many Americans perceive Florida as being open and ready to go than those of our hospitality industry in California. So today, to encourage people to think about California and start planning trips for the future and this summer and beyond, Visit California announces the launch of Dreaming On in California as we look ahead to brighter days and how we can make up time and all the time we lost in moments in 2020. So what a better place uh, to make those missed dreams come true than right here in California. If you've postponed a wedding or had to skip a milestone birthday, missing your grandchildren for more than the likes of a year and other special moments, we want to hear your story. If you spent 2020 Netflix and chilling and put your dreams and celebrations on hold, head to visitcalifornia.com forward slash dreaming on and tell us more about what you've missed. June 21st through 25th, we'll help all of California with dreaming on with a series of epic events from a special night of family reunions with the San Diego Padres to an over-the-top elopement chapel in Napa Valley to a once-in-a-lifetime sunset dinner with a celebrity chef. Set against California's epic backdrops, these moments will help share to the world all that the Golden State has to offer. Now, despite all this cause for celebration, I want to shift to rebuilding the workforce in California because we still have a lot of work to do. Obviously, the pandemic was devastating to the travel and hospitality industry's workforce. Just think about it. The unemployment was twice that of the Great Depression for the hospitality industry during this time. And let's face it, people power the hospitality industry. Individuals, the faces, and the human spirit is what makes our hospitality industry so special. There are countless personal stories that can illustrate this fact, but we have a short video just to tell you about a few of them. Let's roll that video. So it just honestly felt like yesterday we were all standing on top of our chairs, watching that cruise ship dock in San Francisco, and really thinking there is no way tourism is going to die. Everyone loves to travel and everyone's going to, especially if there's stress, you know? And so there was no talk of, do you think we're gonna get laid off? Honestly, I don't think I even knew what the word furlough meant. After one week of being furloughed, I think it's then I got the call from the VP of our department that I'm so sad to let you go, but we do have to let you go. Like you're one, you're one on the list. Most of our staff have been here for 20 years, so one day they have to go home and they didn't come back. That's a very strange feeling, very sad, yes. We started to notice groups canceling, business slowing down. I was cutting hours and sending people home early, and that was about a week before we got news that the hotel would be closing for who knows how long. I remember a lot of my housekeepers would come up and ask me, like, well, when are things going back to normal? A couple weeks? A month? I'm like, I don't think you realize how big this is. This is going to be years before things go back to normal. So, yeah, it felt like this span of two or three weeks before, uh, from when groups started canceling to the point I was furloughed. You know, when we have to close the hotel and ask staff to go back home, the next day what I have to do is ask to call all our suppliers and tell them, sorry, uh, we have to stop our contract, we don't need any more. 
croissant for breakfast, we don't need any more flowers for the lobby. And it's all small business, they are not really in hospitality, but they have work because we give them work. Uh, we create business for them. I didn't wear a look for like a month or a month and a half, and then I come back, I was afraid because so, you know, it's something new and it's a new virus. You know, we're just worried about the future. I was kind of worried about, is the restaurant industry going to survive this? Do I need to find employment in a different industry? There's a, it's a pretty big pay gap between people sort of working the job titles that I have, server, bartender, and cooks. That divide between the kitchen and the front of the house is also to some important degree a racial divide. Yeah, which makes it sort of all the more important that we try and address issues of fairness there. I love tourism. I love telling people how amazing San Francisco is but I am feeling a little uneasy about having both my husband and I in the same industry. There was never a thought in my mind where, okay, maybe you do tech, I'll do tourism. It really sinks in like how many people, I get emotional here, are not back to work, are still home. It's been a year and I've been, you know, back for six, seven months now and, and they're still at home and I can't imagine like still being off work like over a year, I mean, he has. The role of the leaders and managers these days is like to try to help them if they want to come back, try to help them to give them the keys to do the job and perform. And I know that they can do it, but I understand that change can be something very, very um, scary. I do think tourism is going to make a comeback. I don't know what date. I don't know if it's specifically sooner than later. On a very sort of basic level, I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that I'll get to see people's faces again. <laughs> This is where I started. I started in the restaurant and hospitality industry, and I've gone through a pandemic, and I don't feel myself going to any other industry. Yeah. So those are the faces, the real faces, of the 600,000 jobs lost in the first month alone in the aftermath of the lockdown. So rebuilding the hospitality workforce in a sustainable, equitable way will be a top priority for all of us as we're coming out of this pandemic. Visit California partnered with RAND Corporation on new research that paints a picture of the hospitality workforce and gives us some rich insights into the most affected industry and job losses. The losses affected entry level and Latino workers the hardest. And for every hospitality job lost, a ripple effect occurs. Our research shows that for every three travel and hospitality jobs, that supports another two California jobs. Thousands of small businesses, including forests, farmers, ranchers, fishermen, bakers, brewers, winemakers, coffee roasters, print shops, launderers, cleaning services, technology providers, and a host of others rely on the catalytic action of the hospitality industry for their livelihoods. Again, according to the RAND report, tourism is one of the best industries that provides a springboard for those seeking a higher living standard. The dynamic is even stronger among restaurants and restaurant workers. Visit California is committed to supporting our partners, more than 20,000 businesses in the state and more uh, as we work through this ongoing challenge and are ready to put Californians back to work as they're ready. Now I'd like to pause and invite our dear friend and colleague, Joe D'Alessandro, the president of San Francisco Travel to the podium. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Carolyn and uh, Lieutenant Governor, welcome. It's uh, great to have this meeting, even though it's small, here in San Francisco again, see people in person, and those of you who are joining us virtually, welcome. Welcome to San Francisco. You know, tourism is the livelihood of all of California's gateway cities, and San Francisco has seen what we expect to be the worst of the pandemic influence financial crisis, and we are looking forward to brighter days now. And in fact, we do see some light at the end of the tunnel. Tourism-generated tax revenue fuels this city, 
And with so many hotels closing their doors last year and so many visitors staying at home, those coffers lost two-thirds of the revenue that funds our community services, public safety, and infrastructure in this city. San Francisco lost $295.7 million in hotel taxes um, last year, down 71.2% over 2019. Hotel occupancy averaged around 27.2% last year compared to pre-pandemic levels around 85%, some of the highest occupancy levels in the entire nation, as visitors stayed home and many buildings closed uh, during the pandemic. It was reported last week that SFO has lost more passengers than any other airport in the United States due to the pandemic and its slowest to recover. San Francisco was especially hard hit by the pandemic as 63% of all of our visitor spending is from international visitors um, in 2019, the largest share of any major city in the country. International visitor spending in 2020 was $829 million in San Francisco, down $4.3 billion from the year before, or an 83.8% .8 decline. Spending on meetings and conventions also fell dramatically last year in San Francisco. It was only $275 million, down $1.6 billion from the year before, or 85.5% decrease. But San Francisco is not alone. The same story has played out in every community around the state. In times of crisis, collaboration is absolutely critical. And we set aside our usual competition by pulling investments and working together under the California banner and under the leadership of Visit California. We are here today in this beautiful building that just reopened uh, almost two years ago, a national crown jewel for conventions and meetings. It has served our city well during this pandemic, uh, repurposed as a temporary shelter for the unhoused, a coronavirus emergency operations center, and most recently and still today as a mass vaccination center. But now it's time to get this building open for its core function of hosting meetings and large scale events to really support the heart of this city. city. And you'll see this happening this fall and we're very excited to have that happen. Just this week, we launched our Meet Local campaign together with the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce, the Golden Gate Restaurant Association, the Hotel Council of San Francisco, and the Bay Area Council, designed to encourage organizations and businesses to start meeting again and to hold their meetings here in San Francisco and in the Bay, in the Bay Area. Meet locally. That's one way of getting our business meetings started again. Fortunately, we're in a city and a state that has weathered the health aspects of the pandemic relatively well compared to other destinations around the country and around the world. And I want to call out Mayor Breed and her leadership for being the very first city in a shelter in place and also having some of the lowest COVID case rates throughout the pandemic of any major city in the country. The successful vaccine rollout in, in California, along with more readily available rapid testing options and robust safety protocols, have positioned California to begin recapturing our market share. We're confident that recently announced state guidelines will help bring those meetings and conventions back to the state, back to this building, and back to this marvelous city behind us, helping to power our economic recovery. This is what will get our hotel employees back on the job. This is what will get the workers here in Moscone back to work, and getting our restaurants to resume lunch service and get our streets buzzing with people again. Business travel will trail the return of domestic leisure travel and even international visitation, making leisure travelers more important now than ever to bring our cities back to life. San Francisco is ready to welcome visitors back. And this summer, all Californians should consider experiencing the world-class cities and destinations in our own state. I would encourage everybody to consider making a trip to see somewhere in California that you haven't seen before, or maybe a one of your favorite places that you've been many a times. Now is the time to visit California from our iconic attractions, our cultural institutions, and world-class dining experiences. The options are indeed limitless, and it will make a big difference in speeding up our collective recovery. Now is the time to visit California. Thank you very much for your time today. And Carolyn, thank you. Thank you, Joe, and perfect ending and segue to an exclamation point I want to put on what we see as a challenge meets opportunity in Californians in helping fuel their recovery by choosing to vacation in California uh, for the short and long term. We all have a bucket list destination in California we haven't been to, so let's take it now. 
I just want to lend a perspective on that. Just from June of 2020 through February of 2021 alone, California lost nearly $12 billion in visitor spendings from Californians leaving the state to vacation in other destinations. Mexico, in particular, a billion dollars went to Mexico. We all know there's a reality and wanderlust around the world, but this is about choosing California and choosing your fellow Californians first as a modern day act of patriotism and helping get the state back on track, generating billions in tax revenues and putting our friends and family back to work when they're ready. So as we said, uh, it's important to choose California, consider that bucket list and uh, really just consider that we're all in this together and it really lands with us that we can shorten that uh, recovery curve. And that's why we're really just calling on all Californians to look to this state uh, where people from around the world want to visit and we have it all right here in our backyard. So with that, on behalf of Visit California, I thank our friends, our colleagues, Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis, Joe D'Alessandro, for being here for this important announcement today and we're happy to take some questions from the media. Thank you again, everyone. A reminder to journalists on the webinar, please, if you'd like to ask a question, use the Zoom Q&A function to ask that question. We have a first question for Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis. And that question is, is it safe to travel now while California still has a travel alert? Uh, so thank you very much for that question. It is important to notice that there are precautions that are still and requirements that are still in place. And that is because um, California is putting health and safety first, as we have done from the beginning. Uh, so that imperative for safety will continue uh, to be heated. And of course, all businesses are not just encouraged, but also required um, to use those precautions, which is again why when you go into a restaurant, you see waiters with their masks on, you see tables distanced. There are still uh, two things that have uh, the science has shown are the most effective in terms of having precautions uh, during COVID-19, wearing a mask and social distancing. That Still, however, what we know is our restaurants can open, our hotels can open. We can certainly go hiking and be outside and enjoy the natural environment, but we can also go into theaters and we can go into places now that are enclosed. So long as we uh, all respect these precautions, which again, as we know, are going to continue to be less and less as we move toward that June 15th guideline. The other uh, element, though, that is important to note is that part of that travel advisory goes toward those outside of the state. And per our travel advisory, we are encouraging only visitors outside of the state coming into California for essential purposes. That puts even more of the, um, the hope on California travelers to take advantage of the openings in order to help reopen uh, our travel and tourism business, which as we know is still where most of the jobs that were lost have yet to be gained. And uh, I appreciate the way that Carolyn Batetta put it. In a way, this is sort of a modern act of California patriotism to go support our businesses, which by the way, you know, if you're the kind of person who doesn't really like crowds anyway, it's a perfect time to go to Disneyland. It's the perfect time uh, to go to a museum because they're not gonna be packed with people because they can't be. So what a great way, for instance, to go and enjoy the San Francisco MoMA behind me when you know you're gonna be able to go and enjoy these galleries with capacity limitations and really be able to experience it even more. So uh, yes, there are, uh, there are precautions still in place, uh, but by and large for 
vacation travelers, if you go to the website of a hotel uh, or a theater or a, a restaurant, somewhere where you want to go, you'll be able to find those pretty easily. And again, um, they're primarily around capacity limitations, social distancing, and mask wearing. And those uh, limitations are going to continue to be eased as we get to the June 15th uh, timeline. I have a question for Carolyn Batetta. And the question is uh, regarding California's competition with other states, are we at a competitive disadvantage? I would say coming out of the pandemic, we are at a short term disadvantage because of the perception that I mentioned. Uh, and we have another issue that benefits us in normal times, and that is we, are, we have an incredible public-private partnership with the state of California. The tourism industry is a commodity board like the Ag Commodity Board, so we're funded privately from over 20,000 businesses or investors in this program. Well, our budget uh, is is based on the health and wellness of the tourism industry at large. And because we lost 55% of total travel spending, our budget was reduced by that accordingly. The competition is as fierce as ever as every destination around the nation and the world wants to bring back those visitors. And so we are a little bit stymied in terms of our reach and frequency, particularly after July 1st, the new fiscal year. Another, another question for you, Carolyn. How does the Dreaming On program that you announced work? Basically, as I mentioned, uh, we really are encouraging authentic, organic stories and experiences to share with our friends around the world and, and of course this nation and California that we are open. I, I mentioned according to research and this issue around what we call destination readiness, the perception is that our competing states, some nearby, some further away such as Florida, are perceived to be much more open than we are. And really we are trying to put an emphasis on this date of June 15th and beyond, that we are open for business uh, to people beyond California and we are excited to welcome them. And we want to deliver that, it, it, that experience in person and provide inspiration for others that our hospitality industry is here to welcome them. So we really want to hear from people, their stories, uh, about experiences and, and actually we're doing 10 elopements in Napa Valley, for example, and reunions in San Diego with the Padres, and as I mentioned, with a celebrity chef at a sunset dinner, uh, to give them that extra boost and, and share it with the world. A couple more questions for you, Carolyn. How does uh, California's fire danger factor into Visit California's thinking regarding its campaigns? A uh, very important question for us, and, and really in the last year we've pivoted in terms of wildfire crisis response to look at it as, frankly, a new normal and a condition, uh, frankly, that starts with nature in terms of renewal of forests, but mindful that we've had incredible growth in the state and migration into rural areas as well as the issue of climate change. But with all of that, we know that other destinations, and we are learning from them, for example, in the southeast, every year the southeast corridor experiences hurricane season, uh, and they have other mitigating factors as well. But we need to understand, first and foremost, that wildfires have happened since the beginning of time, and we need to better communicate uh, from, a, from the position of the tourism industry and tourism corridors that we have, for example, first and foremost, 100 million acres of land in California. And during one of the worst years, such as last year, only 4% of that landmass was affected. Most of this area takes place in open space wilderness area and, and does not touch tourism corridors. 
but the people around the world, our visitors and nationally, don't really have an understanding because unfortunately they see the pictures over and over again of what they perceive to be as it being charred throughout California. So our job is to educate them on the impacts, where they're occurring, where it's safe to travel, where it's safe not to travel, but most importantly, you still can plan a trip to California because at the end of the day, most of the area, mostly about 1% gets affected and most of the time it falls with outside of tourism corridors. So that's our job. We'll be looking back to you in the media as partners to aptly communicate this as we go into what is our wildfire season like the Southeast goes into hurricane season. Uh, also for you, Carolyn, what is California's best way to entice international travelers to come back? Our job with international travelers is certainly to follow CDC guidelines, look to those primary, secondary, and tertiary markets and what their guidelines are. Fortunately for us, while we did shut the super majority of our international operations, we have 14 offices around the world, we did keep up uh, communications with them, a candle in the window, so to speak, to make sure that we continued those communications with the trade. And as we round the corner into next fiscal year, we'll be getting to build back that foundation and communicating our open for business messaging, uh, starting with a major trade show that has occurred every year, but was postponed due to the pandemic. Uh, the international IPW put on by US Travel Association will be our first major international platform that'll occur this fall. Many of you know it usually occurs in the spring. Now it's been pushed to the fall. So uh, that is first and foremost uh, where we will begin to re-engage the relationship of our international trade partners around the world. Question for Joe D'Alessandro. How are you communicating with San Francisco residents to prime them for having visitors returning to the community? So it's very interesting. Um, we do an annual survey of uh, residents and visitors to, to San Francisco. And, um, and our most recent survey showed that about 95% of all residents of San Francisco believe that tourism is vital to our economy. I think that this year we learned a lot. We learned how important visitors and tourism are to the very small businesses that fuel our neighborhoods, whether it's to the restaurants that you go to, whether it's to the cultural institutions that surround us, whether it's to the bookstores or, or you name it. Visitors support the quality of life that we as San Franciscans find so important to us. So one of our main goals is to say, look at the life of San Francisco before the pandemic when the businesses were healthy and look at the challenges that many small businesses have suffered during the pandemic and let's get them going again. Right now there's a small business challenge happening in San Francisco for this month, encouraging people to support small businesses. And I think that we have to do that to keep them alive so when visitors come back into San Francisco and come back into California, those businesses will be here for them too. Small business is the lifeblood of a city like San Francisco, and it's really our responsibility to support them during these challenging times until the visitors come back in full force to continue to support them for all of us. One more question for you, Joe. What steps is San Francisco Travel taking to try to entice conventions back? So that's a real focus right now for us. Um, you'll start seeing conventions come back into this building in uh, September of this year, and we're super excited about that. Um, we are actively working all of our major markets across the country. The bottom line is this, California today has the lowest case rates of any uh, state in the country. That is an incredible thing. When people travel, they want to feel safe. And we can assure them that traveling to California is safe, making your meetings here with a proper protocol is a safe thing to do. But we encourage everybody, follow the rules, get your vaccines. The, the more people are vaccinated, the more we're gonna be able to open up quickly. Wear your mask, follow all the proper procedures because then we can get back to a robust meeting schedule and then we can get back to more active return to our daily lives. So we're actively involved in getting meetings back into San Francisco. You're seeing small meetings already start happening. When this building opens in September to major conventions, it's gonna be a real sign that California is back in the meeting industry. And that is the end of our questions.
So thank you again, all of you who joined us in person as well as online today. I just, I just want to note that Visit California's economic research can be found online at industry.visitcalifornia.com or access via our travelmattersca.com website. Much appreciated. We'll keep the dialogue going and get out there and visit California this summer. Thanks, everybody.